If you've tried decluttering and you are still struggling with clutter, I'm gonna talk about Swedish death cleaning. I think this could be a solution for you. Swedish death cleaning, or dough stadning as it's known in Swedish, is a totally different take on decluttering. And maybe you think you're too young to start this kind of decluttering. The idea is you get rid of all of the things that you don't need and don't use and all of the things that you've accumulated now while you're still alive so nobody has to do it for you after you're gone. It's actually, I think, really practical because not only does it benefit the people who might have to clean out your stuff for you. It actually benefits you and you end up living and having this decluttered freeing life now while you're still here to enjoy it. And a lot of people actually enjoy the process of Swedish death cleaning because it gives them a chance to go through their things and reminisce and they just kind of People have described it as like a joyful experience. I'm in the process of Swedish death cleaning my attic and I'm also Swedish death cleaning my basement. And that's the thing about death cleaning is you're not gonna be Swedish death cleaning like areas in your home that you see on a regular basis. Like you're not gonna Swedish death clean your kitchen table, for example. It's really about cleaning out the spaces in your home like storage and just the areas where you keep all of the things that you've accumulated over your lifetime. I have like probably 25 years of things in my home because I, I've ended up accumulating things over my life and then I just took them as I moved from apartment to apartment and now to this house. We've been in this house for 12 years and I just have stuff even from my childhood. So while I've been death cleaning, I am going to share with you seven very surprising things that I learned while doing it. And I'm also gonna say, this might be the solution you're looking for. Okay, the first thing I learned while Swedish death cleaning is you are not too young to start. Even, I'm in my 40s, maybe you're in your 20s, maybe you're in your 30s, maybe you're older. It doesn't matter, you can start anytime. The reason why I started is I kind of had this realization that my attic and my basement were far too cluttered for us to even use or enjoy. So we have a basement and then we have a downstairs, an upstairs, and an attic. And we primarily just use the downstairs and the upstairs. We don't use the attic too much. We don't use the basement too much. And so what was happening is I would do some decluttering. I would move things around in my house and then I would just store it away in the attic or stuff it away in the basement, really just delaying my decision on what to do with it. So knowing that I decided one day recently that I needed to do something drastic and I stumbled upon S Swedish death cleaning. I've done a few videos about it. I've learned a ton about it. So I wanna pass it on to you. I think it's easy to think about death when we get old, right? Like it's kind of like maybe in the back of your mind throughout your life, but as you get older, maybe it's easier to think about. But listen, like, Life is not guaranteed, so there is no reason to put off Swedish death cleaning. It is such a good way to look at your items and decide what to do to them when you're looking at them with the lens of like, you may not be here, is this item, does it really need to stay in your home and be sitting here? So why not reap the benefits of an uncluttered home while you're still alive? If you're enjoying this kind of content, I would love for you to click that subscribe button. It is free and I make videos twice a week. The second surprising thing that I learned is it's not actually just about not leaving things for your loved ones to have to go through after you're gone, but it's actually about preserving your family's legacy. What is important and what do you wanna pass down? So like if I have an attic full of stuff and it's just like a ton of stuff, maybe it all looks like garbage to the outside person, right? Like my kids, after I'm gone, they could come up to my attic and say like, I don't know, let's just get rid of everything. If I mix the important stuff that I want them to have and that I feel like is important for our family, if I mix that in with the stuff that's truly can just be donated or thrown away, nobody's gonna know. Nobody's gonna find the things that are important. I mean, maybe I've got important family heirlooms and they have stories and they're just hidden amongst the junk and that's that. I don't have a ton of family heirlooms or things like that, but the ones I do, I definitely wanna pass those down and I definitely want my kids to know the story of them and be able to have them. The third surprising thing I learned is that Swedish death cleaning is not about normal decluttering. We talk a lot about decluttering rules and things that you're doing while you're decluttering. Swedish death cleaning is totally different. It's not cleaning, it's not even really decluttering. It's kind of all about trying to figure out like, what is the purpose of my possessions? And your possessions could have a lot of purposes. 
do you use them? Do you need them? Do you want them? So Swedish death cleaning is more so like figuring out the purpose of an item and then deciding from there what you do with it. If you use it and it's meaningful, you keep it. If you don't, you toss it. This fourth one, I cannot overstate the importance of this one. I have made, at this point, in the last couple of months, I have made three trips to the donation center with a huge carload of stuff. I still have more to do. I'm going to do some more videos on it and I'm going to kind of walk you through actually my decluttering process. If you think that might be useful, let me know in the comments below. But I can confidently say after donating all of this stuff, I finally see not only a light of, at the end of the tunnel, I also am much less stressed. You would be very surprised at the amount of stress you could have from your unseen clutter. I don't come up to my attic too often. I don't go down to my basement too often. I would have thought it's not bothering me in any way, but, but that's not true. Unseen clutter actually affects you psychologically. It stresses you out. It creates anxiety, and you may not even realize it. I did a whole video. I will link a card. Watch it after this video if you're interested. It's all about the psychological aspects of clutter and what it's doing to you and things that you might not even realize. The fifth thing I learned is, so they say that Swedish death cleaning is not meant to be morbid. It's just a lens to make a decision on your things, right? But I have to say the surprising thing that I learned is it actually is a little, if not a lot, sad. And the reason is you're kind of going through your things and you're going through memories. And in a lot of cases, you're going through things that maybe came from people who are no longer here. So you get sad about it. Maybe you're looking at like your kids' toys or their clothing and you're a little bit sad for different times when they were younger. It's also a little bit sad because then you're thinking to yourself, gosh, like, I'm not going to be here forever. Like, I have a finite time on this earth. And you kind of, that comes into your mind and you're just a little bit sad about it. And that's okay. I think it's okay to be a little bit sad. It's okay to be a little bit thoughtful when you're doing it. I very much believe in the philosophy that your loved ones are not your things. So I have things that people have given to me and I know that this is not them. You know, it's just something that they owned and I can't assign such a heavy value to things or else you would never get rid of anything, right? We would keep everything. But I do have to say, when you're getting rid of your stuff and you're getting rid of these things that have a story, it can feel very difficult. You know, you have this, all of this stuff that's like a pr like proof of a life well lived, and it is not easy to get rid of it. It's definitely easier to talk about Swedish death cleaning than it is to doing it, but that doesn't mean it should stop you because it is such a good way to get a handle on your clutter and the benefits far, far outweigh the risks of keeping everything and having a cluttered home. Okay, the last surprising thing that I realized is I actually don't have as much stuff that I wanna pass down to my kids as I thought that I would. I always thought that I just had so many things that I wanna pass down to them, but it turns out I have maybe a box per kid, and it's not a lot. And hopefully, instead of stuff, being passed down to my kids, I'm passing down things like good values, you know, kindness and courage and patience. These are the important things in life, right? Thanks so much, guys. I'm going to link a video if you want to keep the Swedish death cleaning going. I've done a few videos. I'm going to keep on doing more, so make sure you're subscribed if you're not. Also, I recently launched a newsletter. Go ahead and sign up below. I would love to see you over in your inbox, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.